My phone has been ringing over time because all my friends and everybody in the family knows I know about solar and now they all heard, oh, there's a solar battery rebate, we can get something for free. A lot of people have solar. There's four million solar systems out there and now we're gonna have a rebate. So four million people suddenly go, oh, I want a battery. I could never afford it. The solar battery comes now with a rebate. I can actually afford it. Mm, hang on. The first question is, is your solar system actually ready for a battery? Presented by your energy. Answer. Because a lot of solar systems, when you look at them, they're actually not strong enough to handle a battery. So I remember 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10, we used to sell one and a half, two, three, sometimes four kilowatt systems. And a four kilowatt system is like putting a single horse in front of a double decker bus. It's not going to work. So you can take 1 million solar systems right now out of the equation because they're never going to be big enough to handle a decent sized battery. It's too small. And the battery rebate actually says you need a 5 kilowatt hour minimum battery size. So firstly, if your solar system is let's say below 5 or 6.6 .6 kilowatt, in that case, just forget it. The battery is not going to help you. You're going to have to budget for a solar and battery system. So I started by saying, okay, I've got a big system. I've got 35 kilowatts of solar on my house. So that's a good start. So I thought, oh, I better just check if everything's okay before I put the battery on, etc. So I asked the solar services guy to come out and I'm in solar. I check my monitoring, everything seems to be fine. I got four strings coming down. One string hasn't been working. And you know what I suspect? It might have not been working since I got the system because I got a beautiful monitoring app and that monitoring app has not shown that I lost a quarter of my consumption. So that actually means potentially one of the strings somewhere, I don't know, has a kink, is not connected. So we're going to check that out. And then, of course, are there any other issues with your solar system? So when I had mine inspected, guess what? I found a pigeon nest underneath. So now I've got to actually put pigeon wire around my solar first before I can even think of the battery. Now, luckily, I'm a smart guy. You're a pretty smart guy, huh? Yeah. I'm going to be able to get onto that roof and potentially do it myself and not fall off. But in most cases, you really want a professional to go out there and put your pigeon guard on it. But there's another thing that could happen. Now, I'm not trying to talk you out of solar. It's very rare that it happens, but my neighbors love feeding pigeons and that's become my problem. Get a health check on your solar system before you really want to have the battery. So that maybe get the company that comes out to do that, uh, to sell you the battery, to actually do check out your solar in the first place. Now, the other thing that you might say is, oh, well, everything should be fine. I have my solar here. It's working and everything. But hang on. What's the condition of your switchboard? You might have to consider a switchboard upgrade if your previous solar guy just kind of higgledy pickledy your solar into it and now you're really seriously about sending some decent battery power through that switchboard so make sure the condition if your switchboard is up to scratch otherwise in your budget you got to also allow for the switchboard upgrade and do not blame the solar guy when he says look this is not conforming to standards anymore we're going to do that so just keep that in the mind when you do your budget and then, of course, if you've got an existing solar system, the question is, what type of inverter did you have? Most of you will not have a hybrid inverter, which allows a smooth uh, plugging in with existing batteries and all that. If you were planning ahead, smart on you. But most of you will have just a normal inverter. Now, it's a waste to throw that inverter out if it's actually a good quality machine and it's been working for quite a while. So in that case, you do not want a DC coupled battery, which is, you know, the direct current battery which is the solar side of things because you don't want to touch the solar my solar is working I got a six seven eight nine kilowatt system leave my solar it's fine I don't want to pay for a new solar system just give me what's called an AC coupled battery an AC coupled means it's sitting on the other side of the switchboard and I do not have to touch my solar and the Tesla Powerwall 2 for example was one of the key AC coupled solutions in Australia and it was very successful because it was just able to be bolted onto without changing anything. So you for example have a product called WH Franklin which is also 13.5 kilowatt hours and that's an AC coupled solution 
and the SIG Energy battery can either run as a DC or an AC, and that's why they're so popular, because they have the variety, and you can use it either way. So in that case, you will ask your installer, look, I like my solar, uh, give me feedback, but if it can be saved, and I can keep the inverter, then in that case, go for an AC coupled solution. Now, if you have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system with a 5 kilowatt inverter, which a lot of people have, and you think, well, I could put an AC coupled battery on the side, that'll work all nice. But what about if you want more solar to it? And there's a problem because it depends on when your system was installed. Because the Australian regulations for solar installation changed literally every couple of years. Extra safety things got added and added and added. So an older system often is what's called non-compliant. In some instances, you either would have to upgrade the system or in other cases the upgrades and the rewiring and all that is so expensive that it's a lot of times not worth it but theoretically you could have your 6.6 .6 kilowatt system it works the inverter is there and you now add and let's say another 6.6 .6 as a separate solar system independently of the old one and then go with an AC coupled battery solution so you could actually bolt an extra system onto it. In a lot of cases, because panels have become so cheap, nevertheless, it is sometimes more efficient. Let's say a five kilowatt inverter maybe costs you 1500 bucks of whatever brand. Your 10 might only cost you 1900. So the installer quite correctly will argue, mate, we're now hickledy-pickledying around with two different systems just get one big inverter, get whole new panels, they're much more efficient, etc. If, on the other hand, you're ready to start fresh and to really get a big solar system and you want to really have a big battery, bigger is better. In that case, obviously, you can also consider the DC coupled solution because then you will remove your inverter and in most cases, potentially also your panels and you go for a panel inverter, battery solution all in one as a new solution. Now, what's the end result for that? You very likely will see about another third of your electricity bill going down. So if you maybe had a 50% or a 60% reduction because of solar, your battery will not get you necessarily bill free, but you will be very, very close. And if you do VPPs and if you do, you know, very smart the when you charge your uh, battery, etc., you could actually see that your electricity bill is very, very, very low. So that's the reality there. But coming back to it, so if the installer says, look, mate, you're better off to put a whole new system on instead of two hickledy pickledies, it does very much depend on how the original panels sit on the roof. If they're sitting in an area that is not affected and you can put another 6.6 .6 or 8 or 10 on another part of the roof and it's beautiful and not a problem, I would argue sometimes it's worth going with two different systems. But if it's kind of plonked right in the middle of the roof and now you kind of only got room around it, then in that case, your initial installer wasn't really thinking for the future. And in that case, you either have to now move the panels around, which is extra costs, probably rewiring as well. In a lot of cases, not worth it. And in that case, sometimes it's just better to start again. If they want to sell you the battery remotely, then that's straight away a red flag. Run away, do not use them. If they're not willing to physically come out, other than if you're in the middle of Cuba PD or places like that, but if they're not willing to physically come out and check your house for the suitable of a battery, then I would discount them. And the reason is what I found in my own house is you walk around and you check it out and you go, oh, I should fit a battery here, should be going here. It's actually really hard to find a suitable spot for your battery because you've got the air con somewhere, you've got the hot water somewhere, and ideally a battery position has a couple of rules not near a window, um, not near livable areas, especially if there's a window, um, not anything like flammable cladding, then you have to put a fiber sheet in front. If it's in a garage, you've got to put bollards in front, which makes the garage a little bit narrower. You know, then you've got your hot water system somewhere, you've got your air con somewhere, um, you might store some stuff somewhere, and you walk around the house and you go, oh my God, where is it? And you cannot put it on a north wall or western wall because then the little thing will fry. And guess what batteries hate more than anything? Heat. And what do we have in Australia? Heat. So no, oh, your western wall is not suitable. 
your southern wall would be very good and maybe your eastern wall or your garage. But so basically the location I found, circling the house, finally found a spot on a kind of southern wall, but I got to put some kind of a shading near it so that my battery is definitely out of the heat. And one of the things I'm so passionate about is that you actually insist to get good monitoring on your battery. So when your installer installs, sometimes they have a bit of a longer day and they want to bolt out. You got to make sure that all your monitoring and your apps is properly set up and is part of the deal. So my question, when you install the battery, they come with apps? Yeah, yeah. No problem. Well, will you install the apps on two of our phones or three of our phones in the family so we all have the ability to monitor this and teach me how to do it? And should there be any kind of Wi Fi disconnection, I learn how to do it. Will that be part of the handover? And will you or your um, installers be there to do that for me? You really want to insist on that. My sister-in-law, we went past her place recently and I looked at her inverter and it had a little red light going. And I go, I knock the thing, I check it out and everything. I walk in, I say, have, has the electricity bill gone up a bit? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's winter, it's terrible. I go, no, it's not winter, it's terrible. Your solar is not working. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, I said, what did your monitoring say? Monitoring? I don't have nothing. Now, just to add to it, my sister-in-law's system was only four years old and I have no idea how long it's not been working. Not just to be able to monitor that the thing is working, but what it also does, if you have the monitoring, you can actually say, oh, I'm running my aircon full steam here. Is my graph of my solar generation still higher than my aircon? Because then I have guilt-free aircon and I have actually literally free aircon. So, or you go, oh, washing machine, I've got to do three loads. Oh, my solar is doing really nicely. My battery is full. I can do all these three loads now, and I'm not going to really pay a cent out of the grid because everything is hanky-dory with my battery and my solar is producing nicely, so this is the time to do it. Now, a lot of times it makes sense to do it in the middle of the day, put it on timers, etc. So good monitoring actually makes you start dancing kind of literally within your consumption with what your solar does and your battery. And your battery gives you now a big, big window of when you can do things. You can now turn the washing machine on at night and still run it from your solar that's gone into your battery. How good is that? Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.